All right, one last time. I'll try to work on this. Now I may at least have a calculator. So what we have is we have an, a triangle, and we have side, side, side. And what we need to do is we need to find the remaining angles. Well, what we've learned previously is to use the law of sines. And when applying the law of sines, though, we had to make sure we had a ratio between the side length and its angle. In this problem, we have a, we, in this case, we do not have a problem because we do not have any ratios that we can rate as we don't have any angles. So we need to pick an angle that we want to find first. And the best way to use this, the best angle to choose first, is the angle that is across from the longest side. Because knowing what that angle is, if it's going to be acute or obtuse, will help us then determine what our L to 2 angles are. So we notice that the largest, longest side is 19. Therefore, I'm going to want to find angle B first. So I'm going to use the law of cosines that includes angle B. And the formula for law of cosines that includes angle B looks like this. B squared equals A squared plus C squared minus 2 times A times C times, bless you, cosine of B. So now what I'm simply going to do is just plug in my values for B, A, B, A, and C, and then solve for cosine of B. So we have B is going to be 19 squared equals 14 squared plus 8 squared minus 2 times 14 times 8 times the cosine of B. 19 squared is going to be 361 equals 196 plus 64. And then 2, 2 times 14 times 8 is going to be 224 times the cosine of B. Now I can just add these up. So simplify. So I get 361 equals this one's going to be 260 minus 224 times the cosine of B. Subtract 260 to the other side. I get 101 equals negative 224 times the cosine of B divided by negative 224. And so I could say 101 divided by negative 224 equals a negative 0 0.4509 equals the cosine of B. Well, remember, I want to evaluate for B, so I can say B equals the inverse cosine of negative 0.4509. Therefore, B is going to equal 116.80. Um, so you could say B is actually going to be an obtuse angle. So 116.80. Now, why is that so important to know that B is an obtuse angle? Well, it's important because if you know if you have one obtuse angle, it's impossible to have any other obtuse angles, right? That's very, very important to know. Once you have this obtuse angle, your other two angles have to be obtuse. So now we need to apply the law of sines. And we can figure out either one of these angles. It doesn't really matter. But now I have a ratio. So I could say 19 over the sine of b equals, and what you could look at this is, let's just solve for a. So it's going to be 14 over the sine of A. All right? So now, when solving for this, I'll, or sorry, solve for B is now 19. All right, so our A is 100, our B is 116.80. So now, by using my cross multiplication, I could say the sine of A is equal to 14 times the sine of 116.80, all divided by 19. So let's plug this in our calculator. So we have 14 times the sine of 116.80, and then divided by 19, and then the inverse sine, second answer. So now we could say A equals 41.12. All right. And just notice that, whoa, shut up. Just notice by now, including these signs, this angle, um, we don't need to worry about, because you could say that you could look at this and say, um, you know, finding angle A, that there could be a possibility, there could be something wrong with you're looking like side side angle. But since we already know that we have, an high, high, we have an obtuse angle, we know that using this has to be acute. And there's no other way. We don't need to find another possibility for that angle, since we've already determined that. Then, now our last step, so we know that's 141.12. So now to find angle C, we just need to take 180 minus 41.12 minus 116.80.
So you do 180 minus 41.12 minus 116.80, and you get 22.08. There you go.